Hi, today we're going to be going over the numbers. If you're following my channel, you're probably um, creating digital products. Whether you're selling on Etsy or some other platform, you're in the digital product space. Probably printables or digital planners. So today we're going to go over the numbers to see what can get you or what do you need to get to $10,000 per month revenue. That would be $120,000 a year. Or if you're just trying to reach six figures this year or next year, what do you need to do to reach those milestones? If that interests you, watch this video in its entirety. I'm Sherry from SherryLouMiller.com. And here I discuss creating digital products, using Canva, selling them on Etsy so that you can create financial flexibility in your budget and live your life by design, not default. Let's get started with the numbers. Okay, so what I've done is started to create the spreadsheet. There are 52 weeks in a year. Basically, this year, the 31st fall starts the 53rd week, but for all practical purposes, we're going to use 52 weeks. If you work 40 hours a week, you need 2,080 hours per year, 30-hour work week, 1,560, and a 20-hour work week, 1,040. Then I've calculated your hourly rate that you would need to pay yourself to reach various milestones. If you're aiming for 50, 75, 100, and 120. We're going to stick with these two right here because a lot of times when people are going into business, including myself, the goal is to get 10000 a month. That seems to be the sweet spot for everyone. Or you just want to hit six figures, which would be 100000 so if you're working a 40 hour work week, you would have to earn $48 and some change per hour to reach $100,000 revenue. Now this won't take into account your Etsy fees or anything else, but you could figure that out too by just doing an average of your fees and figuring out how much expenses you have per month. And maybe we'll do a future video on that. But for right now, we're gonna do a pretty vanilla, straightforward, spreadsheet and just assume everything's um taken into account and to reach a hundred thousand dollars on a 40-hour work week you need 48 dollars and some change to earn ten thousand per month which would be a hundred and twenty thousand per year you need to make fifty seven dollars and sixty nine cents and i'm just rounding if you only wanted to do part-time you see your rate's going to go up sixty four ten seventy six ninety two and if you're strictly part-time, 20 hours, 96.15 and 115.38. So these are the numbers that you would have to earn to reach those milestones in your business. So now at $100,000, we're going to focus right here for a second. At $100,000 for a 40-hour work week on a five-day, assuming because most nine-to-five jobs are five days a week, eight hours a day. You would have to earn in your business $384 and we'll just say 62 cents rounding up $461 and 54 cents to reach the $10,000 per month. This is what you would have to do per day. But if you're running a digital product business, that's 24 seven. It doesn't operate on a typical five day work week. So let's say now we're going to do a seven day work week. So at 40 hours per week divided by a seven day work week, now you need to average a little over five hours a day. So we're gonna take our hourly rate times the number of hours per day because it's a seven day work week now because your digital products versus a typical nine to five job. Now, spreading it out over seven days, you got to do about $275 a day and 300, we'll just say 330. So what can get you to that point? Because really, if you're in a digital product space, you're probably not doing, you might be doing 40 hours a week because I do, if you're just getting started, because there's all the other things involved, the marketing, whether you're on social media, if you have a blog, you could be doing even more than 40 hours a week, but we're going to stick to 40. But let's say you're working a full-time job and this is a side hustle, 
just getting you started, you may not have 40 hours to work. So you may have to do less hours per week. You just It's just not enough time in the day to do a typical nine to five job and then work your job 40 hours a week too. You'd probably be pretty burnt out. So now to get you to 20 hours, that would be for five a five day work week, four hours a day. For a seven day work week, just a little, almost we'll say three. So if we multiply these now, your hourly rate times the number of hours per day, that's how much you would have to earn. For the 100,000, and then if you wanted to do 10K a month, we have $115 an hour, four hours a day, and then with this one, a little less than three hours a day. So now you can see basically the overall numbers are the same for a 40 hour work week and a 20 hour work week. And our goal is to work smarter, not harder. And the reason is this, this is twice the rate as this, and this is half the hours of that. So the end numbers are the same, whether you work 20 or 40, just depends on how much you want to pay yourself, the more you pay yourself the less you, hours you have to put in, which means you have to price your products in a space that gets you to your end goal. And we're gonna work through some numbers on that. But just let's take this a step further. So what I've done is it varies throughout the year how many weeks are per month, but we're just gonna say on the average, most months have five weeks in each month. So at five weeks times 40 hours per week, that's 200 hours per month. At 20 hours a week, that's 100 hours per month. So if you take one hour, 100 hours per month times your hourly rate, this is what you get. So the same thing here. If you took 200 times your hourly rate, you would still get the same number. So you're going to have to earn $9,600 per month revenue to get 100,000. If you wanna do 10,000 a month, then now that's different. We have 200 hours per month times your hourly rate, 11,500. And it was, it's gonna be the same here because your hourly rate is just twice as much. So the hourly rate times 100, same number. So these are, these are the milestones that you have to reach. So how many products do you have to sell per day? And how are you gonna price them accordingly to reach this goal? So that's why I mentioned in another video, don't compete on price. I did a video a couple of weeks ago. I will link it below. I went through a few digital product shops and showed how much they were earning. And then there was one shop that wasn't competing on price. She was pricing, I'm saying she, she was pricing her planners at $28. Whereas other shops were running discounts and sales because right now, depending on what kind of planner you're selling, we're almost going into the second quarter on Saturday. Different things sell differently throughout the year. So you should mix up your products or the type of products that you are offering in your shop so that you have something that carries you for each season. And it depends on whether you're targeting a um, specific target audience. Then you just have to factor in the fact that fourth quarter may be your bread and butter and it may make up for the other quarters or other months that don't do as well. Because if you're targeting a certain audience, you don't just start dumping things into your shop just to get sales. You want your audience to know that they can come back and expect you're doing mindset, you're doing manifestation, you're doing financial. What is it that you're offering in your shop? And some shops do, they just sell a little of everything, but that's your choice. You have to decide that. But these are the goals that we have to reach, the milestones that we have to reach in order to reach this goal. Okay, so what I've done here is I've gone over to Allura and I've exported a shop's monthly data. And I'm not gonna disclose the shop's name in, the, in this video. So here, I can tell you that they have 67 planners in their shop. 
The shop was opened in 2020 and they have quite a few bestsellers and a lot of their products have over 20 items in the cart. So the shop is doing pretty well. But if you scroll down, I've summarized where well, I've totaled their monthly sales at 4,500. So for a shop that's doing extremely well, they're making 4,500 revenue per month. Now I have no idea how they're marketing, the number of hours they're putting in per week or anything. This is just to show like this product has been around not quite two years, but almost. This is definitely two years. It's averaging almost $300 a month. This is the best seller. It's a digital planner. It's an uh, undated sort of all-in-one planner. Total revenue is $35,000, but they're averaging about $1,700 per month. So the reason for that, that I wanted to show that, is to reach six figures, you'd, you have to do almost twice as much. Now, that's based on now. And like I said, picking up September, going into fourth quarters, fourth quarter, planners will start to sell better, especially if you're on a fitness, budgeting anything that people are going to try to improve for the new year. Because fourth quarter and the beginning of first quarter, everybody's trying to make changes. They want to be more productive. They want to be more fit. They want to get their finance together. So those planners will probably get a boost in fourth quarter but this is limiting it just to we're saying planners on etsy digital products include so many other things whether you're doing print on demand whether you're doing courses maybe you're doing affiliate products so to go to get here based on digital products taking into an account a shop that's doing very well you are going to have to do twice what she's doing but keep in mind, this is passive income. So once you create the planners, you may put in a lot of work to create the planners. But then going forward, it's going to be more about marketing. You have to get those products in front of people. And the more you can build a target audience where people keep coming back to see what you're offering, the less effort you'll have to put in. So I think initially you would focus more on this scenario that you're going to probably have to put in maybe about 40 hours a week if you're just getting started because there's a lot more things that you have to do. So, so just to recap the numbers, because I am primarily talking about digital products, you're looking at selling 24-7, so you have to average about $275 a day or $330 a day average to reach, the, reach these milestones. So building a six-figure business will require effort, <laughs> especially if you're like me, you're starting out with not really an audience because you've heard me say in the beginning, my other store was a gift shop. So I didn't create an email list. And even if I did, it's not the same target audience. I wouldn't be able to use it. But you want to start building your list because you want to be able to market to those customers. You may decide to create a course later on, or maybe you've taken a course that you feel your audience will benefit from. And it depends on what audience you're working with. If you're working with a B2B audience where you're selling a business to business audience, where you're selling products to business owners who want to start selling digital products, whether it's you're doing a consumer, you're doing B2C, then it might be a little different but you still want an audience to be able to communicate with, let them know if you have new products, whether you have a course that you want to recommend, these can all increase your revenue and get you to your end goal. But if you're strictly selling on Etsy, you're strictly selling products and you're not doing anything else, then you see the milestones that you have to reach, 9,000 a month, 11,000 a month, to reach those end goals. Is it doable? Yes, because people do it, but it requires effort. It requires marketing. It requires you building up an audience. It requires you staying consistent. So it's not that it's not possible. It's just that sometimes I think people say, oh, I want to earn six figures, but you have to keep in mind, what does that take to do? What is required of you? So 
the hourly rate that you're looking to earn, how much, how many products do you have to sell per day to reach those goals? You know, do the numbers. The numbers always come into play. Now, I am an accountant by trade, so I typically do go to the numbers, but then there are other things that'll get you there and you have to figure out what works best for you. Social media marketing doesn't work for everybody because everyone doesn't want to be on social media, but you have to figure out a way to get your products in front of people because even on Etsy, even if you get the keywords and your ranking, that's great. But if you can drive traffic to your listings yourself, that just increases the amount that you do per day. You don't want to rely solely on Etsy. You need to participate in the process yourself, whether you're running ads, whether you're posting, whether you're doing videos, showcasing, because that's always good to showcase the product being used. Lifestyle demonstration increases like people can see it. I'm a visual. So when you can show someone how to use it, what it's used for, increases the odds that your conversion rates will be higher. So these are the numbers. If if 100,000 isn't your goal, do the 50, do the 75. Maybe you want to work up to a six-figure business. If you've been in it for a while and you're kind of just stuck and you're not really doing anything, do the numbers and figure out the things that can get you there. What, what haven't you been doing? Are you marketing enough? Are you keeping yourself in front of people enough? Are you posting? Are you sharing? You have to do things to get yourself in front of people. The digital product space, the digital planner space um, in particular, they're competitive. So you are going to have to stand out, but you'll stand out with your own people. If you create a community, those people will be loyal to you. Those customers will come back to see what you're selling. So in the beginning, you may start out that you just want to focus on building a community. And as you build a community, community and you start to offer your community value and you show them things and you give them free planners or you give them free advice whatever it is you're doing they'll support you and they may even you know they're your best sales team they testimonials they tell their friends they tell you know how it is you tell one person they tell and it just snowballs so those are the things that you have to keep in mind this is a business it's not a set it and forget it even with passive income if you don't keep promoting it if you don't stay in front of people then the passive income will just start to decrease. <laughs> and I don't know, like I'm not a trendy person, so you don't necessarily have to stay on the trends, but you do have to stay an active participant in your business. So I hope you found value in today's video. If so, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and come back for more videos like this as we start to talk more about building the business and the things that can increase your sales and not so much how to create the planners. I think we have enough to show you how to get started. Now we gotta focus more on the business building activities. I'll see you in the next video and enjoy the rest of your week.